the, the reason I knew about B.B. King was because of him. Oh, I mean, I was reading about the great blues men in interviews with Eric Clapton when I was a kid. I mean, Eric was a huge hero and influence for me. And, um, and um, <clears throat> you know, he, he mentioned B.B. King and talked about him and, and Albert and all, Freddie, but and a lot about B.B. And then I realized, wait, B.B. King, I read an ad in the paper. He's playing, he's playing in New Iberia. It's 20 minutes from my home. And so I went down and heard B.B. King in this little uh, Chitlin Circuit Club back when he was still doing that and met him. And wow. so that's a great example of how back then, you know, it was way before the Internet, obviously, and, and where information was so you know, immediately accessible. Well, back then, you wanted to hear somebody. If you heard about them, you'd get in the car and drive and go find them. And uh, we used to go to Texas and drive around different states, you know, when we could, me and my friends, just to hear, here's these great players. And um, so he taught me that, Eric taught me that, and um, that was a great life lesson for me. Day podcast radio show with Bruce Hilliard. Today and every day, reaching out for innovative ideas in every way. Today's show is brought to you by your future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. Of course, Sonny was talking about the great Eric Clapton. Sonny Landreth has performed with the best, including Mark Knopfler, Jimmy Buffett, Kenny Loggins, John Hyatt, Marshall Crenshaw, Johnny Winter, and John Mayo on the Blues Breakers. I asked about a song Sonny wrote called Jukebox Mama, and here's what he had to say. Yeah, it took too long to write the songs. It took me like three years to do that album because of that, but man, I had fun. <laughs> and uh, that was sort of a one that, that kind of the the idea was left over we i was working we did uh the album is some years later but it's called uh, the rogue we're on and i got all inspired for that album because I, it was a return to the blues for me and and uh, they just they really got inspired about it and the songs just just really kind of poured out of me for once and um and we were down to needing one other tune, and I don't, I think it was doing the photo shoot for the album with my friend uh, Jack Spencer, who's the, the great photographer. He's world-renowned. No, he's, he's a big shot, but we, we kind of came up together. And, um, and I was looking. He had this shot of me standing, and I'm looking down at a, at a mud puddle, and, uh, and there's a reflection and I, I just, I don't know, it just hit me. And I had this the idea of we were going to go to a local uh, little juke joint. And he wanted to get, uh, my art director and girlfriend, Megan Barra, wanted to um, get a shot of that jukebox in this little joint out in the country. And I started thinking about that. And that's what inspired, uh, I just came up with a title, uh, Jukebox Mama. And I started hearing the chorus in my head. And that's happened a lot um, where I would, I'll, I've said this before, it's like you're writing the song from the inside out and you come up with the, the, the refrain or the chorus and then you go, well, what would inspire that? You know, what would inspire the title Jukebox Mama? And then you come up with an idea for a, a couple of lines of the verse and then that inspires the next verse and so on. So it's uh, it's a process, but it's a and there's no guarantees, you know. Um, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But when it does, it's uh, it's worth the ride for sure. This magic box is full of lights and all the songs that'll run. Change your way is true. Just press the play. Cause I love the way you slide your shoes in the meltdown boogie. Let me wrap around. Jukebox mama, jukebox mama, jukebox mama. Let me wrap around you. Woo!
That one worked. Yeah, it's great. There's a video of you playing with Eric Clapton, and maybe there are several, but it's the one that pops up first on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Where are you playing? It looks like an ocean of people. That's that's in uh, I'm sorry, Chicago and Toyota Park. Uh, we did uh, two of them. I, I did all of the cross. That's the Crossroads Festival yeah. that he established and. And I'm sure you know, but he, the whole idea behind it was to sort of um, call to arms of, of of his, what he called his favorite guitar players, and then to take all the money from the proceeds. Everyone dedicated their time, and uh, he had all the money from the proceeds for the tickets and the sales of the CD later and or, or a DVD or whatever all goes to um his um his uh clinic in antigua for a drug and alcohol rehabilitation it's an incredible place that's cool and um and it's, so it's it's a really noble cause um top you know top production the the works to take great care of you you know and and it established a real community vibe between all the players uh, I, I just love that i mean it was uh some of them were already friends of mine and others i had met but what was so great is that he liked having me play first and he he considered that an honor as did i to sort of kick the whole thing off and what was great about that was he would come out and play with us uh number one and number two 
then I got to hear all the other groups and these are like the best in the world, you know, oh, yeah. some of the best players in the world. And, um, and to get to know them and, you know, sort of establish that as a kind of our tribe, um, I think was really special. I sure miss doing them. The last one we did, uh, in, uh, um, in New York city at Madison square gardens. And, uh, and it, it was great in terms of all of the technical end of it, but I kind of miss that backstage vibe we had, um, outside of Chicago. And I think those were, were pretty, you know, they were all great, but those were a little kind of extra special for me. Very inspiring. I think Eric Clapton would probably say he was influenced a lot by, um, Southern American music. Uh, oh sure i mean he he was he, the reason i knew about bb king was because of him oh i mean i was reading about the great blues men in interviews with eric clapton when i was a kid i mean eric was a huge hero influence for me and um and um <clears throat> yeah he he mentioned bb king and talked about him and and albert and all ready but and a lot about bb and then i realized wait bb king i read an ad in the paper he's playing He's playing in New Iberia. That's 20 minutes from my home. And so I went down and heard B.B. King in this little uh, Chitlin Circuit Club back when he was still doing that and met him. And wow. so that's a great example of how back then, you know, it was way before the Internet, obviously, and, and where information was so you know, immediately accessible. Well, back then, you wanted to hear somebody. If you heard about them, you'd get in the car and drive and go find them. And uh, we used to go to Texas and drive around different states, you know, when we could, me and my friends, just to hear, here's these great players. And um, so he taught me that. Eric taught me that. And um, that was a great life lesson for me. Um, so to finally get to work with him, and, and here again, he's, ringing the bell for all these, these players. And, uh, I like Hubert, Mr. Hubert Sumlin. I got to be good friends with him. And, uh, it was in a way it was like it, it completed the circle for me and, uh, kind of brought it all back, all back to home for me. It must be an honor to play with that, you know, that quality of players and whatnot. And, and oh, you're definitely, man, it's the best. You're, I mean, it's just, it's the greatest affirmation there is. You know, and um, it, it, as a musician, right, and and then too to get to work with them or if I record with them in the studio and to see how they work and and you know you always hope some other cosmic dust rubs off on you <laughs> somehow. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and 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 then to, but to become friends that's that's just the that's. Uh, that's a little something extra line up that's that's just priceless. And then he, yeah, Eric and I went and we had dinner one night in New Orleans. We were both played uh, the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival. I play it every year, but it was a, it was a big deal for him to come and play it. And and we uh, I was um, initially they tried to set it up to where I played before him and then and so forth, but that didn't work out. And um. And anyway, we we just going to hang out, so we we uh, went to Commander's Palace and set all that up, and um, it was awesome. I mean, just to get to hang and enjoy dinner and talk about guitars and amps and stuff, and he'd tell me old stories from the, back in the day, and it was really cool. So that's that's the part of it that I love the most. So music has been good to you. It's, it's been, it's been great to me and it's, um, it's, it's the value fulfillment in particular, even if I just played as an instrumentalist, but, um, the added experience of writing my own songs and taking that out on the road, because it's kind of a cyclical, it's a cyclical thing too, where you get an idea for a song, you write the song then you go into the studio and it's time to do that. And you record this album, you man, then it's time to go out on the road and play for people. And then while you're out there, you're getting new ideas for songs and it starts all over again. And, um, at one point it's, it all becomes a bit synonymous. Um, 
Have and you... I like that. And and that's <laughs> that's when I feel like all the cylinders are you know firing. And because um, to be honest with you, left of my own devices, I'd just sit on my couch and watch TV and drink red wine, oh, hang out my little you. dog. <laughs> you know, so I, you I get the itch. Yank me out of that. <laughs> put me back to work have you um, have you ever... also i just and i'll do that with my guitar i'll just sit there and watch tv and just play guitar i'm doing it all day you could probably um, play in your sleep so too it's, it's, it's best to have a way to plug in that uh in such a way to actually uh, have something to account for it in a creative way have you ever written and recorded a song and then took it out on the road and played it and then thought boy i'd like to take that back in the studio and redo it well, uh, you know, it's, that's a good question. Um, I would say more so adding ideas to it and on another version, because what happens is it, and, and I think pretty much there are a lot of musicians that would tell you the same thing. When you, if you write a song and you go, you go, go into the studio and record it, really it's once you get out on the road that it begins to have a life of its own then better ideas come up. It gets more developed. I mean, there are songs in our set now that we've been playing for a long, long time. And those songs that last that long is because they just seem to have a life of their own. You know what I mean? It just kept evolving. And it may be more in the department of nuance, but it's something a little different each night. Um, I've never... um, I think what, what more that more for me would be, for example, um, Congo Square. There's like three different versions I've recorded now, and that's a good example of how the song is standing the test of time. And as the years go by, then it you know there've been different versions and changes with it. And um, the album we recorded, uh, not this, the most recent, the live album, but the one before, which that was pretty much the theme it was it was returned back to the blues as well but also um about <clears throat> taking old blues songs that i grew up with that had influenced me and and the, the realization that as i grew as a musician and as i came up with new ideas and new techniques i would bring those back into these old songs so the way that i learned the song originally and the way it is wound up is a, is pretty much a lifetime of of um, you know me being on the road and playing music. It reflects that, and and I, and that was a beautiful lesson for me. I'd never quite thought of it that way. So I thought what would be cool is to go in and record some of those songs that had really hit you know may, had a major impact with me. And and had that experience with those songs, and then use those songs to inspire me to write five new tunes, and then put the two together. So here are these classic blues songs and influenced me, and then here are these songs that you know that led to that. Um, and um, and that was a really cool experience. Um, um, so I think that's kind of you know, it just gives you an idea of how it's not just a matter of coming up with an idea and that's it. And a really good idea will lead to other ones. And, um, and I think that's the case of those songs as well. What's one more song that has a, a really cool backstory to it that I can play later on? Well, that's kind of a tough question, but, so. <laughs> um, I'll tell you one, well, I'll tell you one, um, in the profound department would be Great Gulf Wind, which um, is a song that it's on the uh, South of I Can album, and it's a song that I was just, um, I was real close to my grandmother and my grandparents, my parents, and my grandparents, and my grandmother, my dad's mom, uh, his dad had already passed away, and then his mom was ill and she was in her early nineties and we knew it wasn't going to be long. And I was driving to go see her and I came up with the imagery uh, of, of the song. And 
the idea being that we're all going to see each other again, that there's this con- continuum about that. And I had this, I got this, uh, I got the idea from, I was walking through a cemetery and I thought about what would it be like to, to, you know, for a person who's dealing with loss and then you walk into the cemetery and it's, and all of a sudden there's an, there's an epitaph that speaks to you, you reading something on a gravestone. And in fact, it's enlightening and it's, and it becomes uplifting because it it has its own affirmation that's, that affects your, your, not only your current situation dealing with loss, but how you view uh, life from, from the vantage of a bigger picture. And so anyway, I'm on my way to see her and it it just started, I just started writing this song. And, um, and when she passed away, um, I went to the room and I sang it to her. And then at the funeral in this little um, little bitty church in Oakland, Mississippi. Man, this is up in northern Mississippi. It's a tiny, tiny little town. And my dad was raised there. He was raised in the same house um, that I. It's really the only only house that was always there because we moved around and my other grandparents moved around but that house was always there my whole life so just down the street is this little church and um and i played the song you know my parents were there and my aunts and uncles and nephews and everyone the family was there and uh, and i played the song and that was that was the first time I ever um actually p- played the song in public Walk alone Through markers made of stone After the loss That had deepened When something caught my eye Words on the shrine Full moon aglow I could read them The Delta Moon Is a lantern
Back through the gate I left that restful place Taking with me A new peace of mind So when the loss is profound For those no longer around I just remember To look up at night The Delta Moon Is a lantern say it has a lot of um, depth and meaning for me um, but that's a that's a great example of how uh, life experiences are reflected in, in music and art and 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 how significant that is and those are the, the life-changing events that that stay with us and how the creative mind can put the culminate the whole thing and put it together into something that's amazing well, and you hope that, that the thing you hope for is that then that and 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 truly, I can't tell you how many people have come up to me and have told me that that uh, had such meaning for them and helped them through the similar situation. You know, it could be a, a parent, it could be a brother, or a sister, or, or anyone in your life. It's it's the same thing, and um, and that's that's probably the greatest reward. It, and there is for me as a songwriter and as a musician and to have people come up and share their, their stories with me. Um, yeah, it's really something. You know? That's so great. So I want to thank you for your time. It's been great. I could talk to you all day long. You're a very fascinating person. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Bruce. And, um, and I wish you all the best with the show and, and all the work you do, man. It's, it's just awesome. It's, it's very the, much appreciated. It's the funnest thing there is, and, and I love music as as you do. You're playing in Chicago, I believe, next, correct? Oh, yeah. We have several shows there uh, coming up, yeah. Well, I wish Are you in the area? Is that where you are? No, I'm in Seattle. Oh, okay. Yeah, but yeah, we've already done, we played Seattle already, oh, and I missed it. So, but I'll I'll be watching out for you. We'll be back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll be back, man. We, it's a regular for us. We'll probably back at the Triple Door, with my band. So, Triple Door is a good venue. It sure is. Well, cool, but I appreciate it. Thank you Take so care. much for your time. All right, Sonny. Yeah. We'll talk later. Right. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye.
You've been listening to the Better Each Day podcast radio show with Bruce Hilliard. We'll be back with a new horizon, but until then, honor the future. It comes with a lifetime guarantee. We're all just trying to make the next day a bit better.